time. Now, last time we talked about the loan payable and we put together our amortization table. So now we're going to be recording payments with our amortization table. So let's just recap kind of the issues with the loans. We have a loan on the books, which helped us to finance the company. Couple issues with the loans. One, there's often a short-term version portion and a long-term portion when we're paying installment loans off. However, we don't typically want to have two loan accounts, a short-term and long-term version when we're doing normal bookkeeping because it's better to have one account or easier that I can then tie into my amortization table. Otherwise, the long-term and short-term portions will differ every time. So you want to just make an adjustment for the long-term and short-term portion periodically is my suggestion at the end of the month or a year, possibly having your CPA firm help you out just to do that breakout and then reverse it so that you can then do the bookkeeping easily and have the financial statements uh, when they're necessary, when you're going to report them. So we'll talk about that in the adjusting process. Two, you might have multiple loan accounts in which case you probably you could put them all in one account but you probably want a different loan account and we'll talk more about that in a future presentation when we add another loan account and that way you can tie each loan account into its own amortization table and then three is the breaking out of each payment that's what we're going to focus on here when the interest and the loan principal will differ every time so we're going to be looking at the first two payments we'll actually record both of these and you can see how the payment is the same, but the interest and the loan reduction or reduction to the principal will differ. So that means there's three accounts affected as opposed to two accounts. When you pay like a utility bill, only cash and utilities expenses affected. Here, we're going to have cash, interest expense, and then the reduction of the loan impacted. That adds a little bit of complexity. Also, I can't really memorize the transaction, whether that be through the bank feeds, creating a rule, for example, so I can automate the transaction, or when I just record the transaction every month manually, because even though the dollar amount is the same, that breakout that changes between interest and principal makes it a lot more difficult to automate. So what are the workarounds to that? One is that is that you could try to stay in a cash based system and so for so bookkeepers that are trying to like scale up the business and work on a cash based system to the degree they can might then work with a cpa firm to do adjusting entries periodically possibly at the end of the year when tax returns are prepared or something like that and then they're just going to record the payments and reduce the loan principal for the full amount with possibly the bank feeds and then at the end of the year you ask your CPA firm to say, hey, here's the amortization table. Or if you don't have the amortization table, hey, CPA firm or tax preparer, I would like you to make the amortization table based on the loan documentation and then do the necessary adjusting entries, which might be breaking out the interest and principal portion so that you could do the tax returns and the financial preparation at that time and break out the short term and long term portion of the loan if necessary for tax return and financial reporting at that time. That's one method you can use to try to automate everything on the, on, the, on the bookkeeping side. The other method is we just take our amortization table, which we might have to create as we did here or ask our CPA firm to create, and we'll just have to change it every time in accordance with the amortization table. So that's what we'll do here to see what that looks like. So let's, I'm just gonna highlight this first one and make it green just to say, okay, that's the first one that we're on. And I'll go over here and say, all right, let's go to the first tab then. And just what's going to happen, by the way, this amount's going to go down by the portion that is the loan reduction, taking us to the new loan balance. And then $300 will be interest expense on the profit and loss. And then the checking account will go down by the full amount. 